So now we're going to look at how the Second Punic War begins, the main war we're looking at. Learn about the events of 219 to 218 BC. I'm trying to understand Hannibal's thinking. Very difficult this because the original uh, Carthaginian sources are all destroyed. So we've got to try and work it out from looking at what he did rather than knowing what he was thinking. And develop some analysis skills. River, Ebro, Saguntum, City, Treaty, Sea, Declaration, Senate, Consular of the Consul, the Consular Army, Scipio, you know, yeah, C's okay, Scipio, Pyrenees, Mountains, Rhone, River. Resourceful, meaning you're clever and you do things, figure things out. So, one, Barkid, Spain, and Rome. If you remember, last lesson, we talked about how uh, Hamilcar and then Hasdrubal the fair, had carved out a new empire, really, for the Carthaginians in Africa, so in, in Spain, covering maybe two-thirds of Spain. Once was happening, the Romans were starting to get a bit twitchy. So they sent, during the, uh, after Hamilcar was dead, when Hasdrubal was in charge, they sent a delegation to speak to him, to see what was going on. But they explained to the Romans, well, we're expanding our empire here to gain more money to pay you the money we owe you. So in the end, they made a deal. This river here, the Ebro, is the borderline. They say, right, this side of the river is Carthage's. This, but they can't cross that river with an army. Rome doesn't control it, but says, you know, that's that, that far, no further. Rome decides what happens here, but this, is Carthage, Carthage's empire. Except here's the problem, the city of Saguntum, south of Ebro, so therefore in the area the Carthage controls, but an ally of Rome. So when Hannibal becomes the commander in Spain, in the year 219 BC, for a variety of reasons we're not going to go into, he attacks Saguntum. Saguntum you think I'm allowed to do this? It's, uh, it's south of the Ebro, not attacking the Romans. The Saguntines see differently. They ask Romans for help and a massive siege starts. Polybius tells us that uh, Hannibal laid siege to Saguntum for eight to nine months, at the end of which, when the city was finally captured, everybody was either killed or enslaved. The city was destroyed. Now, how did Rome react to all this? Well, for a start, they didn't send Saguntum any help. This was because by the time they found out what was happening, it was already gone March, new consuls had been elected, and they'd already taken their army to here to fight some pirates and tribes in Illyria. Now, the ancient world, communications are slow, transport is slow, so once the Romans have sent their armies here for the summer, Sending them over to here is a big job. So they decide against it. They do, however, send a delegation to Carthage to see what's going on. They find out, you know, do you, this is a war or what? So uh, a, car, a delegation led by uh, the, the Fabian family, uh, Fabius Maximus is perhaps there, it goes to the Senate and says, what do you want? Do you want peace or war? Famously, a Roman senator, one of the Fabians, holds up his toga in, in two of his fists. What do you want? Peace or war? They're both in my hands. We don't care. Carthage roar. The Carthage senators roar for war, and the war's on. The Romans make a decision. In the next, in the next campaigning season, they elect some more consuls. In particular, they elect one of the Scipio family. And he's going to take his army to Spain to attack Hannibal. Another consular army is going to gather in Sicily to attack Carthage. That's the Romans' plan. And Hannibal has a decision to make. What am I going to do now? The war's on. The war started. We don't know whether he planned it all along or whether he was making up. He went along. The, the sources don't back, up, uh, back it up either way. We do know that in the end, Hannibal decided, now that the war's on, I need to win it. I won't win the war by defending Spain. I won't win the war by 
by defending Carthage. The only way to win the war is to crush Rome. And the only way to crush Rome is to go to Italy. So that's how come Hannibal made his decision to march his army across Spain, across southern France, over the Alps and into Italy to actually fight the Romans in Italy. So the plan, gather his army in 218 BC and start the march. He can't go by sea because the Roman Colosseum in Carthage no longer has any significant uh, sea power. He's going to cross, he's going to buy off and bribe and threaten the Celtic triumphs, the Gauls on the way. He's going to cross to Rome, he's going to try and find a way over the Alps. He can't find a way, he's going to make a way, he says. And then he's going to defeat the Romans in battle. And the aim is, he doesn't want to, he think, he knows he can't actually capture Rome, it's too big, he's always not big enough. But if he can defeat them a few times, he's hoping that their allies, the other Italian states, will desert Rome and he'll be able to come up with a peace plan. So he sets off. Crosses the Pyrenees, no problem. It's through southern France now. He's in southern France. And his first big problem, according to Polybius, is the river Rhone. When he gets to the Rhone, huge river, up to a mile wide in places. And it's here that he's got his first big battle to fight. The local Celtic tribe who are allied to the Roman do decide to try and fight him. And what we can tell happened is our first uh, detailed account of Hannibal's cleverness. He has his camp here. The Celts are here. It's very dangerous crossing a river. To cross a river, you know, as you get to the side, you're easy to attack. So Hannibal sends another officer, Hanno, upriver with an army, a few thousand men. They cross the river, and the Celts don't know they're here. Rest, come down the river. And then Hannibal then starts to cross with his main army. The Celts come down to attack them. Hannibal sends a signal, and then Hanno attacks them from behind. The Celts break and run, and Hannibal will have to cross the river unmolested. During the crossing, the big problem, Polybius writes, is the elephants. They won't cross the river. Hannibal's men have to build rafts for them. And on the rafts, just badly drawn here, they make the, um, the raft look like riverbank. The idea is, They'll fool the elephants into thinking they're standing on, on the land and then they can cross them on these rafts. According to Polybius, the elephants panic when they was going on. They jump into the water. A lot of the men are drowned. Of course, the elephants are fine. Elephants can swim. So they all cross the road easily. Now, the point I want to make about this bit is that Polybius wasn't there. How does he know all this? Polybius doesn't know about the fight with the Celts. He wasn't there crossing the road with the elephants, he wasn't there. This is the sort of stuff that Polybius and then Livy later on, they must have got this information from the Greek historians Hannibal had travelling with him, God, God, Selenus. They must have seen their work. Destroyed now, but Polybius must have seen it. 